It is safe to say that Barcelona's 2020-2021 season has come to a bitter end and is all due to one man. Particularly not throughout the entirety of the season but certainly these last few matches. The crucial points that Barcelona needed to take away, the three points that they needed to surmount so that they can get back into the title race were all kind of just thrown overboard because of Ronald Koeman's tactical ineptitude. Throughout his entire tenure as Barcelona manager, I actually think that Ronald Koeman has done a job well done but perhaps not good enough, certainly not for the standard of a club like Barcelona. And that is something that Joan Laporta is looking at right now and is almost certain to replace him for the next following season. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at their replacements, at the potential managers that could come in and what in the hell is going to happen with the managerial seat for Barcelona for 2021-2022. What's going on guys, Como Stan Bogolis here and welcome back to another episode here of Unscripted and today I bring you guys three names Xavi Hernandez, Garcia Pimienta and Eric Ten Hag as the potential replacements for Barcelona's managerial position for the next following season. So without further ado, I want to get straight into this video, giving you the reasons as to why each of these managers could be positive or negative for Barcelona. And yeah, just like the video, subscribe and let's get right into it. Xavi Hernandez is 100% the fan favorite, the decision, the manager that every single culé wants at its core. It's not a question regarding why, to be honest, but more a question of regarding when. Xavi will manage Barcelona in the next decade or so, and I'm 100% certain on that idea. But the fact that he could come and manage now is something that is yet to be uncovered. Xavi has an incredible relationship with Joan Laporta and that is certainly one of the main key areas as to why this news is being driven forward. If we add to the fact that he has come to Barcelona in a vacation, more or less having 22 suitcases, it really tells you that perhaps he's here for a very long stay. I have to admit in saying that I do believe that Xavi's style of football that he plays in Al-Assad is something that will translate very good with the fan base. Because if we do are speaking about attacking, playing, possession, football, He's got that, and Barcelona are well suited for a team that needs some sort of revolution just akin to that. Moreover, if we take a look at Xavi's stature in this club, we know that his history is supreme, and that will certainly add a lot to his repertoire as a manager. Both the big leaders in the dressing room and the youngsters will look up to him and know how to respect him. That is something that previous managers have struggled because they don't find the right balance between the youth and those that already are instilled in the dressing room. So if you're able to find a mix, a perfect balance between them, you're going to be able to get the support from the players. And we all know that in this stage in football, in this day and age, the players have a very big say in what goes and what doesn't. The main incognito appointing Xavi as a manager is that we do not know how tactically adept he is to manage in competitions of this stage, in La Copa del Rey, in La Liga, and most importantly, a competition like the Champions League. On a very basic level, we can tell that Xavi is tactically competent. In Qatar with Al Sadd, he's averaging 64% possession per game, which is pretty good, and he's constantly shifting from a 4-3-3 to a 4-2-3-1, whilst having one midfielder drop into two defenders the very same way that Busquets does here at Barcelona. So it's, it's very impressive what he's actually able to achieve. But the issue doesn't come in that attacking facet of the game, comes in the defensive one. Because Xavi's al Sadd does have some very similar problems to what Barcelona have had this season. We take a look at a team that defensively has conceded 29 goals throughout the entirety of the campaign, moving up to 14 and most of the time just getting saved basically by the kind of low quality of players, therefore the low efficiency rate of scorers in the Qatari league. Here in Barcelona, in a more competitive scenario, they have better players and even lower teams in the table are going to be able to finish those chances as we've seen from Celta de Vigo just recently, just like Granada recently. Barcelona are going to be struggling if it comes to this scenario and Xavi right now doesn't have any coherent strategy to employ in this team. That is why it's very important to get managers to test out these tactics in bigger leagues where the quality is more important, where the quality is more relevant. Xavi could have followed a path very similar to Pirlo, let's say, in Juventus, where he's coming with an idea and in reality it hasn't really worked out. Then what do you do with that option? Do you scrape it completely? Is the chance for him to continue or become a manager in the future something that could still be reliable? 
you don't really know so you don't really want to kind of press this diamond this gem that you have in your hands and force it to stick you kind of want to wait it out until when is the perfect moment to use it so that is something that Barcelona must think very dearly if there are other options on the table take them but if they're not maybe Xavi is a risk worth taking Moving on, we have the option of Garcia Pimienta, and on paper, this is the one which is most realistic. It's the decision, the manager, the appointment that makes the most sense within the current context of the club. In Garcia Pimienta, we have a manager that has progressively kind of gone through position to position as a youth assistant back all the way in 2006, then assistant coach in 2015, then 2017 become Barcelona B assistant manager and now Barcelona B full-time manager in 2018. Nearly, of course, the last thing that he has to add to his career basically is becoming the first team coach of Barcelona and that might as well be Laporta's safest option. Garcia Pimienta knows Barcelona's DNA throughout because he's been working in La Masia, like I've already said, for more than 10 years. When it comes to working with youngsters, he's produced and collaborated with them in many different occasions. He's been a witness of Ricky Puig. He has produced Ronaldo Araujo. He has helped, of course, the career of someone like Ansu Fati. You take a look at players like Alejandro Valde. You take a look at players like Alex Collado right now. And you really do think that if it comes to progressing the youngsters, Garcia Pimenta might just be the right option for that. If Pimienta is appointed as Barcelona manager, they will certainly be looking at a more youthful approach. An approach perhaps at the start of this season where someone like Ronald Koeman was kind of just entailed to sort of revolutionize the squad and get new fresher faces. Something that he did somewhat with players like Sergio Dest, Pedri here and there, but in reality, it hasn't really gone to the extent that we were expecting. Pimenta should be coming in with a very similar expectation, and here is where I think it would actually go wrong a little bit, because Barcelona fans have already tasted a trophy again, and that is La Copa del Rey. If you already think about the mouth watering for La Liga and that incentive to go out and win more trophies, maybe Garcia Pimienta is not the right decision because he will still need to be testing out all of these youngsters in a new scenario, very similar to Xavi. He has a little bit more experience when it comes to managing this squad, a, a team like Barcelona knows the players a little bit more, but still it could be a very big risk. His tactics as a manager are very interesting because he does play the 4-3-3. Yes, he does, of course, so the youngsters will know it very well, like Condra de la Fuente, for instance, Alex Collado, if they come through, they, of course, would know how to play this style because they've already played with him in Barcelona B, but the fullbacks is where I have a little bit of trouble because his fullbacks are a little bit more defensive. He likes to cover up more ground by having a line of four perhaps behind the ball, something that a new manager that we're also gonna talk later does as well. So it's interesting that he does it, but the profile of players that he uses are not perhaps the ones that Barcelona in the first team currently have. With this, I mean Des and Jordi Alba, fullbacks that know that are known to be attacking, fullbacks that have a lot of benefits when going forward. And that is something that perhaps he won't exploit as much. Most of the creative work for Barcelona comes through the fullbacks. And that is something that is good in some scenarios and not so good in some others. With Garcia Pimienta, most of that creative work are kind of pushed and delegated to the wingers. So Alex Collado, Trincao, a player like Messi are going to be having to do all of the creation work while someone like Antoine Griezmann, like as Usman Dembele will kind of fall short. So it really comes to say that perhaps he doesn't have the right pieces to make the best thing possible. I think this context is a little bit dissimilar as well if you take a look at what fans would be expecting of him. Pep Guardiola is of course a manager they're going to be comparing him to because he's also come from Barcelona B and he kind of made his name afterwards. But in reality, he inherited a squad that was much better, with better quality right now, and not that many decisions to make when it came to the transfers. Pimienta will be inheriting full chaos, and that is a little bit different. That is certainly something that won't go on his favor. The last candidate that we have for a managerial route is Eric Ten Hag, and this one is probably my favorite. The manager that actually has a little more tactical approach, more tactical know-how than Xavi and certainly also Garcia Pimienta. 
When you appoint a manager for a long-term project, you want hard evidence. And Eric Ten Hag has that hard evidence. He's been able to take Ajax to the Champions League semi-final. He's been in Real Madrid more times than someone like Ronald Koeman. And he's been able to tactically coach already many, many big managers. Like Zinedine Zidane, someone who Koeman lost to. And Juventus as well added to that. And we continue the list onwards from that. He gave Pochettino a very big headache, something that Pochettino gave Ronald Koeman. The thing that I really like about Eric Ten Hag is that with him you get the best of both worlds. You get a manager that is tactically competent, but also someone that is able to just get the youth playing very nicely. Ajax is a very good example of this because after a golden generation, like I said, they reached the UCL semifinals, they lost to Tottenham. He revolutionized the side because players like the league, the young left and he brought in new names. Now you have Lisandro Martinez, now you have Edson Alvarez, you see people like Anthony and they continue to play the very same brand of football. And that tells you that Ten Hag knows two things, knows how to build a successful team and knows how to rebuild a squad. Many of the victories that I've already mentioned about Ten Hag come from precise tactical alterations and also courageous decisions. His style of football is very similar to that of Pep Guardiola because he likes to incorporate an extra man in the forward line. This is something that, for instance, someone like Antoine Griezmann or Philippe Coutinho could just benefit from, really. Players that are mostly discarded now for the future, but if we're being completely honest, they still serve very good quality. They still have a lot of football in them, and that is something that Griezmann could be benefited with someone like Ten Hag because he did play people like Tadic before, for instance. Footballers that are not perhaps the fastest, they're not natural wingers, but they still work out because they're goal-scoring threats. And Griezmann knows how to interpret the space and Ten Hag can utilize that and exploit it. Also players like Pedri, players like the young most importantly, are going to be able to excel a lot because their ball playing abilities are just of tremendous quality and Ten Hag knows how to exploit that by adding an extra defender joining the midfield. By doing that you always get what he really likes to do which is a four-man line. A line of four players always behind the ball. They always are very organized and are able to press. There's always enough numbers for the people, the opposition attacking in the counter. Eric Ten Hag has a very good pedigree when it comes to his tactical games and I believe that perhaps this is something that Barca does need. They do need a different approach. Furthermore, the fact that he has been assistant manager to Pep Guardiola knows the criticism to its score. Then he went to Ajax, won a two domestic doubles, and then he could potentially go to Barcelona and never had an affiliation with either Ajax or them. You have a manager that is capable to evolve, to know that football is radically changing and he's not afraid to be looking for more physical approaches as well. He's not someone that is, I'll, I'll say it, like Kuman, for instance, that Kuman wants to do well in Barcelona because he's been part of the history before. Eden Hag doesn't have that luggage. He doesn't have that pressure. He just does what he thinks is best. And that is different. That is certainly very different from Kike Setien, from Valverde, from Kuman. And that might just be the right approach, the right appointment that Barcelona need right now. So with that being said, guys, yes, indeed, my pick would be Eric Ten Hag. He's certainly the hardest manager to obtain from this list. I'm eager to know what do you think about it? What is your opinion? Who do you think should become Barcelona's next manager? Then certainly we need somebody now because time is running out. Time is running out and Barcelona need to find back their way into Europe's elite. And even though Kuman could say for one more season, that is something we're going to discuss in the next video, I just wanted to lay out these replacements on the table because I think all of them could be possible, all of them could be fun, all of them could be good managers to obtain. So yes, indeed, guys, see you in the next one. That's going to be everything for right now. Ciao, ciao.